120 years exactly uh, they have declared a black law which is declared the rohingya is no more the citizen of this country so they have stripped our uh, our our right our birth our nationality and everything that we lost uh, it's a generational statelessness it's a generational illiteracy it's a generational poverty so we have been designed unfortunately to rot people are talking about what they go where they're going to send their children uh, in harvard or in oxford we are thinking what we're going to feed at night cannot travel having a birth certificate is a, is a luxury for rohingya having a passport is is a super luxury we never travel we got we got a smuggled we've been sold out in the market in the in the market of bangladesh in the market of uh, malaysia and thailand and so on in the like, like we've been sold like fish we could do something for the rohingya people we have to do it for the sake of humanity or some of the other minority leaders saying that whatever ends up happening with the rohingya community is going to be indicative of what's going to happen to the rest of us so it's not just a threat on just the rohingya community but on so many minorities I think enough was being done pre 26 pre 2017 by the us but also by many countries uh, to put more pressure on myanmar um i do think that the us leadership at that time was keeping at bay the multilateral effort and push um but even within what multilateral leaders are playing civil society young leaders they have a key role to play as well too and there is not enough nowhere near enough public awareness and i feel like that is one of the greatest weaknesses and challenges when it comes to the rohingya genocide despite all our constraints and despite all the unpleasant experience in the past we once again opened our border it was not an easy task particularly at a time when the refugee situation around the globe was not that much welcoming but we thought humanity should come and we we feel that the we should concentrate on durable solution that means the protection of this people to their homeland in safety and dignity and at the earliest possible but as rights are concerned the accountability and other issues are concerned it is the collective responsibility of the international community implementation of provisional measures uh, still uh, remains uh, at the sweet will of uh, myanmar authorities uh, Uh, so the, what we feel uh, that uh, international community uh, should not shy away uh, from uh, taking their uh, due respon- uh, responsibility yeah and uh, we 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 also feel that uh, the, the people should not uh, leave everything on bangladesh to sort out uh, uh, Now, when we say justice for the Rohingya people, we mean firstly accountability for the atrocities which have been perpetrated against them throughout the years, and secondly, the safe, dignified, and voluntary return of the Rohingya people to their homes and lands in Rakhine, Myanmar. Now, depriving the Rohingya people of their right to return to their homes and lands to get back to their normal lives. living their long lives is undoubtedly unjust and is possibly a crime is a crime against humanity which is an international crime as well the cleansing campaign that was initiated by Myanmar and now a large number of Myanmar uh, Rohingya villages were razed to the ground and uh, new establishments have been built upon it so that is clear evidence of uh, uh, 